This question is a perfect follow-up scenario for the original problem maximum consecutive ones part 1. Over there, you could not change any element in the array. But this time, you can flip at most k zeros and then you have to find out the maximum number of consecutive ones you can find. And once again, it is very similar to the Cadence algorithm. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see how you can approach this problem and then we are gonna try to find an efficient solution just by using a single iteration of the array. After that, as usual, we will also do a trial run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. Since this is a follow-up problem, the basic idea still remains the same. You are given a binary array that only has zeros and ones. And you have to find out how many maximum consecutive ones you can find. There is one additional condition though. You have a value of k as well. This value of k tells that you can flip at most two of the zeros to one. And then you have to determine that, hey, what is the maximum consecutive ones that I can find in the array? What it basically means that you can flip any of these zeros to one. And once you flip them, then you have to find out what is the maximum consecutive ones you can form. So that gives you so many different options, right? You can flip these two zeros. You can flip these two zeros. You can flip these two zeros also. With every condition, the number of maximum consecutive ones you can find will keep on changing. For this particular test case, you will find the maximum number of consecutive ones when you flip this zero and this zero to one. So now you will get six consecutive ones. So for the first test case, six will be your answer. Similarly, as your array starts to grow, things can start to become really complicated. For example, look at this particular array and the value of k is three. That means you can flip any of the three zeros in this array. And then you have to find out what is the maximum number of consecutive ones you can find. And you can easily see that this particular array can have so many different combinations to flip those zeros, right? You can even flip all of these as well. So which combination is giving you the maximum number of consecutive ones? For this particular test case, you will get the maximum number of consecutive ones when you flip these three zeros. And when you do that, you will get a total of 10 consecutive ones. So for the second test case, 10 is your answer. If you feel that now you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out again. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. When you start to solve this problem, let us try to take up the generic case. That means the larger array where we had a lot of different combinations. The value of k is 3. And if you go via the brute force approach, it is gonna end up taking a lot of time. What you will do is you will try out every different possible combination by which you can replace three zeros. There are a lot of different combinations, right? And if you explore all those scenarios, yes, ultimately you will get the answer, but that will waste a lot of time. And that is certainly not expected. What we want to do is we want to determine the maximum consecutive ones just in a single iteration. And the single iteration tells you a lot about the efficient approach. What you want to do is you want to traverse only once and have some sort of a window because all of these ones, they will be consecutive. So it will have some sort of a starting pointer and it will have some sort of an ending pointer as well. So basically I have some pieces of information available. I know that the value of K is three. I can flip at most three zeros, correct? So let us keep a track of how many zeros that we have already flipped and how many ones I can find. So if you start to traverse the array, you see a zero. Okay. You can flip it because the value of K is three. So I flipped one zero. Now move ahead. You get a zero again. You can flip this also. So the value of zero flip becomes two. Now move ahead. You see a one. That is good. You see a one again. That is good again. Now you see a zero. Can you flip this? Yes, because you have only flipped two zeros right now and you are allowed to flip three zeros. 
So I am going to flip this as well and the value of 0 flipped becomes 3. Correct? At the same time, what is this telling you? This window is telling you the maximum number of consecutive ones you can find by flipping at most 3 zeros. Right? So up till now, I found that, okay, I can find maximum of 5 consecutive ones. Right? Let us go ahead and things will start to become clear. As soon as you move ahead, what do you see? You see the element 0 again. But how many zeros you have flipped? You have already flipped 3 zeros. You cannot flip this. So, if you want to find a solution that could lie ahead, you need to start removing elements from the very back. That is your start pointer. So, what I will do is, I will remove one of the zeros. So, this changes the value of zero flipped to 2. And what I do? I will try to include this zero. And once again, the value of zero flipped changes to 3. Yes, you added a new element. But still your window size remains 5. That means this is the maximum consecutive ones you can find. Let us move ahead now. If I move ahead, I see a 1 again. And I did not have to flip a 0, correct? So what just happened? Look at your window size. It is 6 now. So I can update this value. So what I'm basically doing is I'm traversing the array. If it is a 1, well and good. If it is a 0, I check, hey, can I flip it? If yes, it is determined by the value of k. So I will keep on traversing my array like this and I will also keep a track of what is the maximum value I have found till now. I got a 5 earlier and now I got a 6. So I will keep on updating this value also. Go ahead now. I see a 1 again. I don't have to flip any values. So it gives me a new value. So my current max changes to 7. The next value is 1 again. My current max now changes to 8. Because if you see, even in this window, I only flipped 3 zeros, right? Now move ahead. I see a 0. Can I flip it? No, because I have already flipped 3 zeros. That means I will need to remove one zero from the back. This now changes my window size. But okay, I will include one more element and this will change the value of zeros flipped once again to 3. Now keep on moving ahead. You see a 1 again. So your window has now increased. So current max is now 9 and the maximum far also updates. Go to the next value. It is a 1 again. So I can once again update all of my values. Let us move ahead now. I see a 0. Can I flip it? No. So I need to start removing elements from the very left. Now comes the very interesting part. Look at the next element. It is a 0. Can you flip it? No, because you have already flipped 3 elements. So, it is time that you start to look from the starting and then look for zeros. You check the first element. It is not a zero. So, removing it does not change your value of zeros flipped. So, you will have to continue removing elements. The next element you remove is one again. No change. I still cannot remove another zero. Let us remove one more value. This time I removed a zero. So, the value of zero flipped changes to two. And this means that now I can include this 0. But with this change, my window size comes down to 8. Notice that my current max is 8 and maximum so far is 10. So this window size is certainly not the largest. And that was the whole idea of keeping a track of the maximum so far. Similarly, now you will keep on continuing ahead. The next value you see a 0. So you will remove one value from here and then you will add a value. The next value is again 0. So to include it, you remove 1, 1, 1, and then a 0. So now you will be able to include it. So with these particular zeros, the window size is only 5. This is not good for us. So we are going to continue ahead. And now you can include all of these ones as well. But even with this case, you will still have a maximum of 9 ones. And that is still less than the maximum once we have obtained so far. You are now at the very last location and now you can stop. So did you see just by doing a single iteration, I was able to determine that, hey, what is the maximum consecutive ones I can find? That gives me 
a time complexity of order of n because I only did one iteration and a space complexity of order of 1 because I do not take any extra space to arrive at my solution. When you want to code this particular solution, what we are going to do is we will have a start pointer that starts from the 0th location and we will also have an end pointer that will start from the first location. This is telling me that end minus start, this is my window size. So I am currently having a window size of 0. And what we're going to do is we will keep on moving this pointer ahead to find our windows. Up till this point, I will have three zeros flipped, right? As soon as I move ahead, I will have four zeros. And that means I need to now move my start pointer ahead. So this is the basic idea upon which we will be implementing this solution. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have my sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function longest once. As soon as you begin the dry run, you will set up a few different things. Zero count means the number of zeros you have flipped up till now. The maximum once is going to keep a track of the maximum consecutive once you have found out while traversing through the entire array. Currently, this will be zero as well. After that, you will have two pointers the start pointer and the end pointer. The start pointer is over here at the zeroth location, correct? And to determine the end pointer, what you do is you run a while loop. This loop will start from the zeroth location and then it will go all the way up to the end. So at any instance, if you have to find out your window size, you can find it out by doing a end minus start. So this is giving you your window, correct? What do you do in the while loop now? In your while loop, you're just gonna check if the current number that you are at, that is a zero. If it is a zero, you will increment the count of zero count. That means how many zeros that you have used. So right now I haven't used any zero, correct? So this pointer will keep on moving ahead. As soon as I reach a zero, this zero count will now increase to one. It means that I have flipped one of the zeros right? It will move ahead again. It is at a zero again. So once again, the zero count changes to two, right? So far, so good. As soon as you move one more step ahead, this is where the zero count becomes greater than K. You can only flip two zeros, right? And that is where you will start moving your start pointer. So this while loop will keep on incrementing the start pointer until and unless you reach a zero. So what will happen is this start pointer will keep on moving ahead until you encounter a zero. So that is how you are getting your window sizes. At every step, you keep a track of what is the maximum window size you can find. So you need to compare the maximum ones that you have found up till now and then the current window size. The current window size is end minus start. So this is the current window, right? So once your loop is completed, you will reach the very end and then the max once will store that, hey, this was your largest window size. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. All I want to say is that whenever you see problems like this, example, you have an array and then you have to find a sub array between them. The element should be contiguous. You are asked to find it in a single iteration. These are very good indicators that you have to apply an algorithm something like this. It could be the cadence algorithm, it could be a sliding window algorithm, it could be a two-pointer approach. The main idea is that you have to do it in a single traversal. So these are some of the key hints that can help you whenever you're attacking a similar problem in the future. So while going through all the video, did you face any problems or do you have any other efficient method in mind by which you can even simplify this process? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my next videos. Until then, see ya.